and today we are going to start um, talking about mixed media composition. So uh, I've got some of the ideas prepared for you. I've got surfaces. I'm going to make new project with you step by step. So now this is the moment for everybody to join. I'm here with you. I will check if everything is working and we are starting in about five minutes. So uh, just in case if you are new here, uh, please um, make sure that you are going to check uh, the previous uh, live stream that was done two uh, weeks ago about uh, what to buy when you are a beginner and uh, what kind of uh, tools or uh, basic supplies are the most important and what I would recommend to get on your table for this style of mixed media. So it's going to be kind of helpful for you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I can see people joining. Hello, hello. Um, it's going to be um, start. Yeah, it's going to start in about five minutes. So you can grab something to drink or maybe art supplies. Uh, I suggest that. Um, I made a list that was uh, visible in my stories on Instagram and in my Instagram and Facebook posts. So you can still check it out. Thank you very much for sharing. This is really important if you would like to uh, have that um, shared with your friends so they can find it. It is absolutely <laughs> friendly thing to do. Uh, yes, this is live, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is um, Fina over here in my studio and we are going to start in about five minutes. I will check if I can see the chat on the other screen now so I can focus better. Hello, hello, it's good to see you. Okay, I can see myself. Oh, hello to Romania. Last time we had a really international group. Usually on the streams, you can find people from all over the world. So um, please uh, feel comfortable. We can always uh, find somebody to help you, uh, <laughs> uh, to, who can help you with your questions. Um, for those of you uh, who don't know my um, accent yet, this is Polish accent on the top of okay, Irish cross Polish because we are in Ireland, in Galway. So um, that may be kind of confusing, of course. And um, everything here is done uh, keeping the beginners in mind. These are um, live streams I started to uh, make, especially for people who are just starting the dimensional style of mixed media. So uh, if you like this kind of content, put the thumbs up, like the video so it's uh, what easier to find. And uh, I will be very happy to create for you today. So. Feel free to watch it as many times later as you like. Uh, for many people, it is just easier to first to watch and ask questions and then try to create. Some people prefer to uh, just take the tools and work together with me. And it's really up to you. There are no good or bad ways. So uh, this is uh, all the way. Um, yeah, you have to let me know if the sound is shaky. This is probably, uh, it's probably some kind of connection. Okay, so let's see if we can make it better. Mm -hmm. Choppy sound, okay. <sighs> mm -hmm. That is disappointing. Usually we have no problems with the connection. Let me know if it is getting better in a moment. We will try to cut off all the other um, things that may be taking our internet away. And hopefully this is going to help. It's the first time you are reporting I've got problems uh, with the sound. Yeah, sounded good at first. I hope not to restart because a lot of people is lost. Sound is cracking, yeah. Oh, it is better. Okay, I think it was just uh, a moment. So hopefully 
that is going to be gone. Um, you know, we are <laughs> we are here on the mobile connection. We never have really the um, completely steady internet. So things may be happening. Hello, hello. <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> Thank you. I always worry when things are happening. Okay. So uh, for those of you uh, for those of you who are uh, first time here, please don't be shy and don't be afraid. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, is done for you to be as close as possible to real in-person class as possible. And of course, I do it from my studio, so there may be some interruptions happening. For example, my little dog is trying to convince me to play with him now, but maybe he will go and play with his other important human. Hopefully. <sighs> it's happening again. Let's hope it's going to go away. And uh, as I said, there are no, way, no good or bad waves of stay here okay i will try to do something hopefully this is going to help don't go anywhere okay let's see this is different connection now i switched from my uh Ruler to my phone. Hopefully this is going to help. Let me know. And <clears throat> there is no other device connected. Let's hope this is going to be the solution. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So um, as I mentioned, uh, it's if you are completely... Mm -hmm. See, uh, it's, I think the connection on the ruler today is not the best one. So, huh, perfect. <laughs> uh, so guys, as I told you, if you are doing that for the very first time, this is your first live stream, don't feel like you have to create together with me. You don't have to. Some people just prefer to have a look. I have examples to show you. Uh, I've got some ideas about, um, you know, how to, how the things can be done and i'll be talking to you and i'll be t taking you through the whole uh, uh, project step by step but you can watch it first and then you can try to replay it and uh, do it later and this is absolutely okay depending on the person it is you know either way uh, i'm i will be referring to the previous live class and that was the class when I was telling you which products I believe are the best ones. Um, I will link that in the um, description of the video once we finish. And this is going to be based on the product. Um, and it's all going to be based on the product that I was mentioning. Uh, and if you feel that you need a reference, that is going to be uh, the best video to watch. Uh, as the ladies say, if you feel the screen is frozen, try to refresh uh, because it looks like it is frozen for some people and for some other it is not. And usually this is working perfectly and we should not lose the connection. Uh, I think everything should be fine. So guys, basic tools you need. Um, if you'd like to create along with me, um we need brushes we need something to uh, spread the paste or gel so maybe a palette knife scissors and a bunch of supplies i mentioned that uh, so i can't tell you how to make every kind of composition because that would be a very long video but i will focus on a simple basic mixed media composition the one that would be probably the best for beginners and um, hopefully in the future I can do some more complicated ones. I made pro um, very long live stream oh, about different kinds of comp uh, composition for my patrons last year, and this is a part of the Patreon subscription. So there's much more knowledge in that. Uh, we are going to do small part, um, and I hope this is going to be something that you will enjoy. 
First of all, um, I will give you some reference ideas. We are going to create something similar to this in the lighter background, and we are going to be um, inspired with, um, maybe not very minimalistic, but uh, the composition that is um, uh, not covering the whole surface. It is going to be something that uh, will give me a chance to talk about balance and talking about the space and uh, how to focus the attention of people in the right place. So this should be good for the like the beginners who would like to work with different kind of focal points and different kind of art um, compositions in the future as well. Uh, from the tools, I will use one stencil. I will just quickly pick one so you don't have to have any special style. And I am not sure which colors I'm going to use yet, but Again, I will be using metallic paints, the one that I recommended in the previous video because they're more versatile than the other kinds of acrylic paints. So I will give you a flip so you can look at the uh, table now. We still have a moment to share the video with your friends. You can post it on your uh, Facebook wall. You can send it in a link to your crafty friend. <coughs> Sorry, and we will be starting in a moment. Here are simple compositions I made, and they are good examples of that you don't have to use the whole surface. This this is in fact my last video I made for patrons. So if you are planning to join my Patreon account, um, my subscription, you will see that done step by step as a video. Uh, but the other ones they were done. Um, either just for myself or as a class. This was class I made for people in Peru. And uh, first of all, you have to answer the basic question. How big is the main element of your composition? <laughs> because depending on the size of your focal point or the focal uh, or the photo or the object, it really me it really is going to tell you how big surface you need because if your photo is large let's say if I have a photo of this size um, I would say this kind of surface is a minimum to give it enough space to shine if your image is really small or it's uh, cropped like this one you don't really need that much space and when you work on the unusual surface you can treat these two sides here as one background, in fact. So in, uh, it's almost like a rectangle canvas. So the smaller the focal point, the smaller project you can make. And for the beginners, I would recommend to try with the medium sized and smaller projects because they are not so demanding. And this is um, not going to be too overwhelming. So. This is 15 by 15 centimeter canvas. This is 20 by 20 centimeters. So eight by eight inches, six by six inches. Uh, <laughs> accordingly, this is going to be probably nine inches long, maybe eight and a half to um, five. Uh, yeah, something close to six inches. So they are not big objects. And... <coughs> The smaller the surface you work on, uh, honestly, less of the elements you're going to use, which is good for beginners as well, because you may not have so many objects, you may not have so many elements, and you don't need to do so many things in the background to make it look nice. So I would really recommend this kind of solution. Um, I picked simple stencil. This is the one which is... Uh, combination of the checked pattern and a little bit of gothic text so it's a really uh, very generic maybe used for any kind of project so this is going to be great in fact by accident this is the one I picked for both of these canvases so this is kind of a <laughs> coincidence and I've got two canvases today to show you possible options. Both of them are small. One is exactly uh, six by six inches. This is the, the same size as the smaller canvas. And this is a little bit bigger. So probably this is five by seven or five by six inch. 
Uh, it is 18 centimeters tall to 15 centimeters. No, or maybe close. No, 13 to sorry, 13 to 18. And depending on the on the project uh, you have on your mind, you can use square, you can use rectangle. <coughs> but the real answer really comes from your focal point. And that may be photo. For example, I've got an example of the family photo here, or these are um, some booth, uh, photo booth images that may be great. They are all small, so they will fit better on the smaller project, smaller canvas. So this is ticked. Um, if you plan to use some object as your focal point, here I've got similar clock to the one I used on this canvas. It is also not too big. It's large, but it is not too big, so it will fit on both of these. So this is the first question you have to t ask answer when you are working on something. Uh, how big composition you would like to create? Because if it's not too big, you don't really need to prepare too many elements. So next, next important information is where you should put your composition. And for the beginners, I would suggest to uh, follow the idea of going to one of the corners or one of the sides and then working on the balance on the other side. Because this is going to give you the habit of thinking about the balance on your project. And later when you're going to switch to other compositions, it is going to help you. This is slightly off. Uh, you can see the this uh, this photo is a little bit to the left and then this large paper clip is pulling that even more so this whole composition is um, going from one side to another it is in balance because it is honestly going from left to right and the whole composition is uh, nicely balancing itself because i really went from left to left to right and that is enough. We don't really have too much space here. And this is another good example when we look at the composition. This is slightly to the right side. And then on this side, we've got that tiny, tiny composition, which is balancing for the big one. And I think this kind of thinking is going to be good for the beginners because it's really giving you the habit of remembering about good balance on the project. If you remove that, it is still okay, but this is giving nice counterpoint to what we have on the other side. And no matter when you are going to put your composition, it's going to um, work really well. I will show you that on the example before we are going to start. Let's say I will take the bigger canvas and I took it out of the packaging, but uh, now you can see this is going to be, for example, big composition and small composition. So if you are going to work this way and your composition is going to go to the right, kind of naturally, it will be nice to have something balancing on the left side. If you're going to go to the top right, it will be nicely balancing on the bottom left or the opposite. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But uh, with the heavy dimensional compositions we're going to make, this kind of thinking is going to work really, really well. And it's going to give you this habit of thinking about counterbalance, okay? So if you go to the top right corner, then the bottom left would be your balancing space and of course <laughs> it's going to also work the opposite way opposite way and like this i hope this is pretty straightforward and sometimes the information about where to put your composition is uh, really given to you from the very beginning because of the photo if you work with the photo, there is a lot of information happening. I will try to show you examples. Um, for example, let's take this gentleman, gentleman here, like right? this uh, person is facing that way, this, this gentleman here. So it will be natural to put him 
on the left side of the composition so he will have something to look at at the canvas i hope that makes sense right this person would work better here here or here or somewhere closer to the middle but still on the left side and this is the important thing to remember this is in fact the perfect strip to explain everything i will cut it into pieces so it will be easier oh sorry i know this is a bit of theory but i have to presume theory is important okay so person facing that way okay so he would be very good in this corner and then we can put counterbalance here in this corner with the counterbalance here or somewhere here with the counterbalance here so making like a long long composition so that is kind of natural if we put him on that side of course we can and there are many things i can tell you about it and I was talking about that in this video for patrons, but honestly, this is giving us the feeling that this person is looking away from us. It's going to be a little bit in the, uh, giving us an easy feeling, okay? So when you do this, you have to do it really on purpose and you have to know your purpose. The same story happens here. We have the lady who, well, she's not exactly facing that way, but her body is going that way. So in the first moment, my instinct is telling me to put her on this side, somewhere here, maybe even, it could be closer to that middle, but somewhere on the right side with the counterbalance going this way, okay? Finally, we have a lovely photo of two girls and here, uh, and it also applies to groups of people. Um, honestly, usually groups of people, they are kind of balanced, but unless they are standing in a very unusual way where there is a lot of uh, <laughs> empty space. But most of the times, these are completely balanced photos. So wherever you are going to put this kind of image, it is going to work. Middle corners, sides. This is going to be, just pick any and it's going to be perfect. So if you have image on your mind for your project, look at the image because maybe important information is already there. If you plan to use the object, for example, let's say this is an interesting element that you would like to showcase, there is no rule here. Um, this is working the same way as the perfectly balanced photo, unless the shape is really unusual. Uh, for example, uh, the moon shape. <laughs> uh, so the crescent moon is going to be, hmm, it's going to work. Oh, I have one. Similar to the photo facing because it has a face, right? So probably the crescent moon would be better this way than this way. And this is the most important thing um, for the basic composition before we start. Have you got any questions for that part? Because that may be important for some of you if you don't know anything about mixed media or scrapbooking or you never really worked on the compositions before. I felt that I have to give you that information. Hmm, I need to find somebody to be my focal point today. Thank you. Okay, you explained pretty well. So now, I want to make composition which is similar to this one. So I'm going to use an object, but in the middle I can put also smaller photo. So I don't really have to worry about what is going inside. I can put it as my last step. I will be using this as my uh, element that I will use for orientation, sizes, and everything. Um, for example, I can put the photo of this lovely couple inside of one or one of the smaller faces. It's going to look really, really nice. Instead of the image or um, uh, so the photo of any kind, there may be different elements that may be your focal points. It may be a really interesting composition made of elements, but we are focusing on the basics today. So I'm not going to go too much into complication. 
Um, some people like to work on squares. Some people like to work on rectangles. It is not a huge difference. Uh, it's just the amount of the empty space you are going to have. So if I'm going to put element, let's say on the right side here, I will have very small empty space on the left. So I have to make it more compact here. If I will put it on the right side, this is going to give me more space. I can use longer elements. Um, I can play a little bit more. And also with this, I can work in different kind of orientation as well. So I can work um, vertically and then I have more space on the top or on the bottom. So rectangles in a way are more fun than squares because they give you more options. Um, I mentioned that any kind of surface may work. It's really up to you. Um, you can work on the cardboard, HDF, stretched canvas. It doesn't matter. Uh, today, we are going to go with uh, rectangle. And to make it a little bit, little bit different, because we have two squares as an example, and kind of rectangle <laughs> here, so let's say this is like one big rectangle. Um, I will do rectangle, which is going to be balanced from one corner to another corner. So we are going to work on the composition, which is going to be going from top right to the bottom left. Okay. So uh, this is the main part that is going to attract most of the attention. We are going to put our elements, our compositions around that part. Uh, just to remind you, it can be also your image, your photo. It is going to be whatever you like. Let's say this is it for today. And here I will be adding my mini composition. Okay, so this is going to be the balance. Uh, usually when you start your composition, this is all that you need to know where the focal point goes. If it's easier for you, if you feel that you are getting lost, uh, for the first steps, you can mark, you can uh, add the information for yourself so you can use your imagination and you're going to uh, remember where to put things, especially if you are working with some kind of first layers such as uh, making textures or tissue papers. So uh, that may be useful. And um, when you are going to work with your uh, stencils or some first textures you are going to stick, uh, that may be something that you like. So I'm going to work with the stencil to add a bit of kind of delicate texture in the background. And the product of my choice is going to be 3D matte gel. This is one of the basics I mentioned to you in a previous video. So this is going to be our glue and our texture today. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be transparent after drying. So you are not going really to see the color. Uh, you will only see the texture so we can paint it according to our taste. So if you would like to change the color of it, you can add acrylic paint inside. So now where to put the textures? We focus the attention here and here. So if you'd like to save <laughs> um, a bit of the product, you don't really have to go directly in this place because it will be covered with tons, tons of elements. Uh, you should probably go close to that place. So I'm just going to give a bit of the texture uh, under my focal point and on the side, maybe in the corner, just to have something happening in the background. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. I'm just spreading that with the silicone brush. You can use your palette knife. And color doesn't matter. It's going to be transparent. So if you used paper before, it's still going to be just transparent texture. If you feel, if you hear the funny noise, uh, this is rain, so ignore it. And yes, you can use 3D gloss gel or 3D matte gel. It's going to dry transparent anyway. Look at this. Neutral. Nothing is going to be visible when it comes to color. It's white on white, 
but even if it wasn't, it would be nothing. You can dry it or just start working. I would start with gluing some basic layers. I take part of my 3D gel out and this is mud version, so it's um, transparent but uh, with the matte finish. And now I can focus on creating some basic layers which are going to be under my focal point, something that is going to create the volume, okay? So the focal point, just to show you, it is usually something which is going to be the first thing you see when you look at the project. This is the whole point. So we are going to work on the first layers, which are going to be the closest to the bottom. And these may be paper, paper leftovers. These may be pieces of lace. That may be just simple things as uh, washi tape or fabric tape. It doesn't have to be a lot. What I usually recommend during my classes to my students, I tell them to use the leftovers they have on the table. So they may be just paper, you know, paper strips. I'm going to use the masking tape to create some lines which are going to go from the sides to the focal point. You can still see the focal point here. Right, so they're going to give me some lines to focus on. For some people, it is easier when they see these lines showing them the way. Then, to make it more fun, I will mix it with fabric. But before, remember about the little balancing composition. Don't forget, because this little one is going to be very sad and very lonely, okay? Now, I've got something which is like a tape from pharmacy, so it's going to absorb the color in a little bit different way. I can cut it into smaller strips, thinner. <laughs> Usually, I recommend using a cheap easy to get supplies for this because this is just small part of your composition anyway. Well, yeah, if you forget this focal point, uh, sorry, you forget this balancing side, it's going to feel so, so miserable. And this is like a warm up. We're showing people the way to what is important in the project. So you can think it's like a map you are creating for somebody's eyes. Miło mi bardzo, witam gości z Polski. Bardzo się cieszę. Bardzo mi miło, kiedy przychodzicie, bo mogę do was też pogadać. Okay, um, that was greeting for my friends from Poland joining as well. So look, I'm just using thinner strips, trying to create some kind of lines. And you probably noticed already, I don't go diagonal. And this is because diagonal lines are more, much more challenging. And usually they give you the feeling um, that the composition is breaking in quite dramatic way. And we want to create some chaos here, but uh, you know, I mean like eclectic look, but we want to control it. And it's much easier to control if we were going to give it some kind of straight lines to follow instead of diagonal. So going horizontally and vertically is kind of safe while playing with diagonal, uh, it is a challenge. I honestly never do it because it is uh, giving people too much information. It is probably not really working well for my rich and full of element style. I'm taking another kind of tape. Instead of that, you can use your scraps of paper leftovers. I'm just playing and adding 
textures to make it look a little bit more fun. You could dry the background, but honestly, <laughs> we're just sticking stuff on the top. So why wasting uh, energy? It's not really too complicated. I'm slowly running out of my favorite fabric tape. So when I'll be back uh, in Poland later this year, hopefully, I will buy more in the pharmacy. Because in Irish pharmacies, we don't have this kind of neutral color and size. I don't know why, but this is life. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry. Witam więcej gości z Polski. Bardzo mi miło. Zaczęłam od tłumaczenia, jak sobie zaplanować kompozycję w zależności od tego, jak wygląda nasza, nasz główny bohater, czyli albo zdjęcie, albo element, który chcemy zaprezentować towarzystwu. Także potem możecie sobie to obejrzeć. So it was just a short recap for people joining now. I mentioned that in the previous moments I said a little bit about how to plan your composition according to the um, elements you've got on your mind. So the image or um, the photo, sorry, or the element. So you can see I've got some kind of a map now. I know I need to put my elements here and I use really cheap supplies at the bottom. So if I cover them by accident, I won't be really sorry. I put more valuable and important things closer to the top and <laughs> not so pretty and not so valuable go closer to the bottom. That is a very good way of creating volume and working on the budget at the same time. Oh, you have me on the big screen TV. Oh my God, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Thank you. So we agreed the focal point goes here so I can play around that to create textures and elements and volume. And this uh, smaller composition will go here. It doesn't mean I will put a small clock. And it's just another element to show you what I'm planning to do, okay? <laughs> and now we can start adding elements and these may be uh, more flat parts of your composition, uh, things uh, that are going to be still hidden under the main elements, but uh, they will create a little bit different texture. And it may be chipboard or maybe um, you have some kind of a thicker lace or some kind of uh, flat element. For example, this is a very romantic looking Prima board, and honestly that would look very nice like a garland of flowers in this corner. So I really feel tempted to use that. Um, I quite like using um, things such as uh, transparent elements such as half of the uh, clock or some kind of the cutout. Let's look at this keyboard from Prima. This is uh, something that Prima started to make just recently. Oh, I have some extras, perfect for the balancing composition. Let's see what we can do with that. So I could have this garland of flowers as one of the elements here and that wouldn't be too bad honestly because it's giving me this nice long element to fill this space and these elements are really looking nice going up so i would say this is a good solution um the other option is to use some lace i will just show you what i've got here i usually try to get this kind of uh <laughs> lace that is used for evening gowns or wedding gowns or for uh, table decoration like table throws the, the doilies they are really good for different kind of 
special element. So look, I could absolutely use that as a part of the composition as well. That would be a really nice garland of leaves. Hmm? For example, why not? Uh, or this one. Oh, this is serious stuff. Hmm. Let's combine these two because, because we can. First, I remove this. You know, chipboard is not expensive the element, but lace is even cheaper. It's also all depends what you have at home. And I always recommend for the bottom layers, use the things that you have plenty of. You don't feel sorry. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think how to cut it. <laughs> I will cut it to slightly move it. You will see why I'm doing that in a moment. I use my 3D gel to stick it. I would like this to be a little bit longer. So by cutting and moving away from each other, I create the impression. This whole element is bigger. Nobody will know what was the real shape of it. Now, let's add the lace and see if we can put something in this corner that is going to fill it nicely. Lines from bottom left to top right are more positive and happier. Hmm, maybe. I never really thought about it. I usually just go with my feeling on the, that, you know, on the particular day. But that would mean in the Asian cultures, when they write from uh, left to right and from the top to the bottom, that would be a completely different way of thinking about the compositions as well. I'm cutting that to find nice elements. So we're going to match. See, you can always cut to make things work. Now you can see why I tell you to put cheap things in the background, because sometimes during the creative process, they just naturally get covered by others. And you feel like, oh, I spent so much time making the perfect te uh, texture with the stencil and then I covered that because I was fast and furious and I just couldn't stop myself. So save your money, save your <laughs> elements and use the cheap stuff, okay? I apparently today we're going for romantic look. I picked lace and I picked the flowery chipboard, which is great. And now good advice, if you make composition on one side, don't forget about balancing uh, composition. You didn't tell me I'm too far down. Okay, so if you stick a piece of chipboard on the main composition, put a piece of chipboard on the small one. I have some little bits here as well. Let's take this one. We'll find nice way to put it in. We can add the lace. So this way you won't forget. You stick something here, you stick something there. Makes sense. I'm using the leftover of the lace and the smaller chipboard. It doesn't have to be perfect because you never know what will happen. You may change that in a moment as well and because you work with the gel it still has some working time so you don't have to worry that you have to finish right away i'm sticking also this chipboard here so it seems that it's, uh, it's a part of that composition so so far a short recap 
uh, we've got a basic texture done with the stencil and 3D gel. Uh, this is one of the recommended products for beginners. I used matte version today. You can use gloss. After that, I used some simple uh, strips and this time it was tape, uh, fabric tape and um, masking tape, but it may be paper or anything which gave me the first layers under my composition. We are creating the volume, but so far we stick to the flat elements. And um, then I uh, got some of the chipboards. This time I was using Prima, beautiful, beautiful fleur, apparently uh, English and French name in one. And that was uh, this long rose garland, and I still have that. And I glue that all with the 3D matte gel. And we keep thinking this is the main composition. This is the balancing composition. So now, um, I don't think we're going to use much more of the lace because it is honestly enough. I have to save space for other elements. Um, I will keep this in case if I want to add this little one for something else. And now I would like to give you another tip. Um, this is a um, very good habit to pre-select some elements before you create, because this is going to give you um, less choice. And that means you will work faster in a more effective way. So you won't be running around to find uh, something because you have nothing prepared, right? You, you don't know what to do. Part of the creative process is to prepare your elements, to look through what you have and pick the ones that call your name on that day. Uh, maybe you will get some first ideas when looking at them. Uh, you will think, okay, I would really like to make composition which is based on this or that shape. Um, I really want to use this new package of embellishments I bought, or maybe um, I found this beautiful piece that I think is jewelry, and I would love to include that in my project. So all these things that you feel may be matching the idea uh, you have, or uh, they will be good uh, to go with the topic of your project, or the photo that you have, you can prepare them in a small container, okay? You, I'm not going to use all of that. These are ideas. Um, to add extras, I've got some of the Prima flowers because they may be useful for filling the empty spaces. I have more, of course, but just saying. Um, I've got some leaves of different shapes just in case because, you know, with the flowers, leaves are kind of good solution. And Based on that, it's much easier to build, to build your dimensional composition. So if you're a beginner, um, I would recommend trying uh, limiting yourself at the very beginning, okay? Uh, that is something that <laughs> may be helpful. For example, these are some leftovers I've got from the previous project and that may be useful. These are uh, HDF elements from Artistico, there are some cogs, some mechanical parts, absolutely lovely. And here uh, I've got some of mechanical, some found objects, some frames, crystals, you know, a little bit of everything, but that is going to help me to create the composition. Have you got any questions on that uh, part? Is there anything you would like me to explain again or I should continue? Keep yourself hydrated as well. <laughs> okay, so um, I presume that we are okay. <laughs> and when it comes to dimensional compositions, you know, you can use anything. Um, I usually go in my personal preference and uh, that is mixing different shapes and sizes 
and I absolutely love uh, mixing things which are mechanical with things that are botanical. Uh, this is going to be natural style for me. So I will show you similar composition now. I will just um, give you another example. Look, there are flowers, but they're also light bulbs, cogs, all of that makes sense to me, but uh, it, it really applies to any kind of project. So when you build your composition, you have to uh, look at them, how you decide which elements to use. Using your instinct, and honestly, it's on one day I will feel like using this, on the other day I will feel using like that. And making this pre-selection is already putting me into the right creative zone. It's like it's going to help me to build because I limited my supplies. Okay, I have much more on my table, but I will try. I will try to stick to these only, and then some finishing touches. Also, important thing is you may have something that is the reason you create this project. You may have element that you really want to include. So it has to be ready in front of you. Okay? <laughs> so <clears throat> if you have your kind of idea, kind of preselection of the elements, you have to start with the big ones and then you go to the smaller ones. So let's say we've made the chipboard. I don't want to cover that completely. So now I will look for the biggest elements that I like. And I will try to use them to create some kind of composition. So the biggest ones, I'm putting them here on the top. Okay, so they have to be the first ones. I'm not going to use all of them because that would be impossible. Well, not impossible, but <clears throat> not for today. And this is going to help me to create something, right? So I will use it as a starting point. I know my clock. So let's say I can add this big cog and now this is hanging in the air. So I need to add something to make it work a little bit better. Let's say I add another part of this machine, trying to make it this way. So I still see part of the lace. Mm -hmm. It may be hanging over doesn't matter for us, it is not a problem at all. And usually to balance that as a good triangle, some people absolutely love triangles, we can add number three. And that is going to hold it in place and add dimension already. Can you see that? Because it's kind of like a triangle focusing attention in the middle. If you don't like that concept, or is it too dimensional, you can use other elements, some people more flowery so maybe you would like to use the flowers instead yep that also works umowny podział o fajnych po prostu na dziewięć równych części chyba tym było nic nie zapamiętałem Dobrze cię uczyli, ale to jest trochę wyższa szkoła jazdy i niekoniecznie się sprawdza przy trójwymiarowych projektach. Ja mam na ten temat dłuższe wideo, jak, um, które robiłam dla patronów, bardzo fajne. No ale... Yeah, we are commenting that uh, the rules in art is to make the lines, the nine lines, and there's like this golden rule to put the composition in the right parts where the lines go. You can Google it, it is really... Interesting. However, with dimensional mixed media, it is not always working. So there are many things. Yes, please, if you can give me a thumb up, like the video and subscribe, that will really mean so much to me because that helps the videos to be visible. Thank you. You can uh, like the video on... Uh, yeah, just under the part. So in the meantime, you can see how I use my 3D gel to stick the stuff, <laughs> right? I put a big blob and I press it.
That makes sense to me. And now, according to what I said, now we need to remember to give something to this little composition as well. So let's take this baby little cog and put somewhere here as well. <laughs> so this is not too lonely. Big blobs are the best. Okay, so these are the, this is the main body of the composition. Now we can feel that adding smaller bits and pieces. So we can switch to the, from the big size to the smaller sizes. So let's say these are not useful anymore. Let's check what we have into this, in the smaller sizes. Of course, honestly, I can do it <laughs> much faster and I can do, you know, this composition just not even thinking too much because this is my natural style. But please remember, we are talking to beginners here. So we have to presume there are some people who don't know much about gluing things down and how the things work. So we have the mechanical part, maybe now we should work on the mm, flowery part. And I think this is going to really look nice in here. And we can balance that with something on that side. Just let me think. This is too short. This one is supposed to be longer. So I will use this kind of random frame to pull that composition a little bit further this way. So now I have big space here and I will use it for the biggest possible flower. Doesn't matter, it looks broken. I'm going to cover that with something anyway. Remember, you can change the shape as well if you want to. This is too big. Mm, I can put this little one inside of it. And remove the excess. Yeah, the frame is just a different shape, something else. We didn't have it so far. So this is going to add some interesting uh, shape to look at because so far we have round and flowery. Now we are adding something else. <laughs> when I pick the elements, I try to give myself a selection of shapes and sizes. Now, something for this side, something flowery, but not so big. <laughs> this is too big, so it goes away. Looks like I have to use this one. Oh, this one goes here. I'm looking for something for that place, but it doesn't have to be exactly the flower. Is there a special reason you take away the leftover gel? Yes, because I don't want to have so much texture. I would love to see the shape of the flower as well, and this is going to be visible. So I keep it um, at the minimum. I don't know what that is, but that looks cool. Hmm. I have to keep that in mind. Now, something on the top of this cog because it's honestly too big and I would use that, but it is too large. So 
So this is like partly a hidden flower that works really well as well. So it's going to be under the clock. This is not glued yet, so I can lift it and I can work around it if I want to. And now looking for some nice details to go with that. I really want to use some leaves. I don't have any leaves except one here. I need a little bit more of these. I will open the package. So I'm trying to keep the composition balanced around the clock. And I go with the medium sized elements now. I keep gluing them with the 3D gel. It could be also heavy body gel or 3D gloss, 3D matte. Both options are okay. Oh, this is sweet. I'm going to use that. I'm not putting the gel on the ends. I'm only putting close to the stem because I will slide it under. See? Now, this goes here, so I should balance that with something coming from here. For example, like this. Maybe one more on the other side. And now I will look for a small flower uh, to make that flowery composition on the right a little bit nicer. I have some small prima flowers here. So we can go this way. Maybe this one. Yeah, I have empty space here, some other things, but this is for the mini composition and a little lotus to go with that. Well, honestly, this is the moment when I started sticking around the clock, which means I should probably glue it in. But before I will do it, there is empty space, so I have to put something in there to lift it up a little bit. Uh, it may be a piece of chipboard, for example. So it will have the chance to stick to something. <laughs> well, I make it look easy because this is, first of all, this is my job, right? I do it as my main job for 10 years now. So please remember, we are talking about a bit of experience and also I do it in my most natural way. And it's like you have the, <laughs> you have something that you're really good at. For example, you bake the best uh, cakes in the whole neighborhood or even your own country. And, and people come and say, oh, you make it look so easy. But you've been baking them for the past 10 years, right? So you know exactly about the proportions, about the things that are important or not so important. And you have kind of confidence um, and you are able to share the details, right? So this kind of applies to me as well. This is my natural style. I don't have to stretch myself to make compositions like that. I make them with my eyes closed, as one of you mentioned. But um, I've been doing that for 10 years, right? It was evolving naturally. So for you, it may be not so easy. And don't think you have to do it as quickly uh, as me, please. Okay, look, I don't like this blob. 
Oh, thank you so much. You are so, so kind. I got a gift. I got donation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Look, when I remove it, it is going to be a little bit cleaner, right? And this way, it's not going to be so messy. With the wet brush. If I had to learn, for example, calligraphy now, I would be the most uh, struggling person you can imagine. I have no idea about calligraphy. For me, it is hard to be precise. So I would be out of my comfort zone completely. So please keep that in mind when you th look at me creating for you. This is my job. <laughs> I do it with pleasure. I do it for my uh, myself, but also I've been teaching that for a long, long time. So look, the main body is ready. Now we can add finishing details, things we can just fit here and there to make it perfect. Um, these two are already small elements. So I will be adding maybe just a tiny bit here and there to finish it. And then we will be uh, drying and painting. Okay, so we don't have to use the whole space. This is one of the things that people th believe it's important because they've seen so rich compositions. This is not true. The composition should be balanced. It doesn't matter if you're going to make big composition or small composition, it has to be balanced. And that is the whole key to the success. So now, where can I fit this stuff and what can I fit in to make it more fun? I love using found objects. This is bobbin, right? So this bobbin is going to go into the project as one of my found objects. I just need to take a little bit more of the gel out so it's easier for me to glue. I'm going for, for quite eclectic romantic. So... <laughs> I, I'm happy when I can share things with people. You know, I, when I'm in the classroom, I try to give the confidence to everybody that they can really feel they can create. And I'm trying to do the same here today. I go slowly and ah, this is too big here. It doesn't fit. No matter. We will put it here. Perfect. Stay there. I need something smaller for this space. Look at this beautiful watch part. I will find a space to put it in. It could be here or here, but I think here is nicer. If you feel it doesn't stick, it's probably I didn't put enough gel. Or the place is challenging. It also happens. And again, big blob, I'll remove it. You know, basics are things that are always useful. So I, I mentioned that this is a, especially for beginners, but if you feel you would like to refresh your basics, you're more than welcome. And uh, pen, pen nib. Let's add the pen nib here. I can always find a place to fit something in a uh, uh, fly. Hmm. Hmm. No, or upside down. Hmm. I would like to have something hanging down. And this medallion looks quite pretty. I have also a crystal. Oh, well, it's too big. Or a small crystal. I think the small crystal. <laughs> That's very nice of you. I'm happy, Chris, that you think so. I think, you know, it's always giving you some ideas. Like, you can 
get some new um, ideas from just watching people create. Yeah, don't forget about the little composition on the bottom. We need something here as well. Maybe one mechanical part. Or maybe a little flower. Ha! Flower. Where are my flowers? Oh yeah, flower. We go for romantic. Yep. <laughs> and I've, I'm looking for something to put in here, just to break it a little bit. Hmm. This little thing looks really promising. Let's try to stick it. It looks like part from alarm clock. Old alarm clock cog. Czy towarzystwo mówiące po polsku ma jakieś pytania? I'm checking on guys in Polish. If there's anyone who wants, who's got any questions. Jeśli macie jakieś pytania, proszę dawać. Come on, move in the right position, you little one. I will stick you anyway. Told you. Myślę, że będzie dobrze. Ok, there's empty spot here. Um, what can we use for the empty spots? This is... Oh, look at that, this little light bulb. We go grungy. Well, the problem is I, I was planning to make simple composition and it is not simple anymore. This is what is happening with me when I plan to make simple. So I need to finish quickly because otherwise we will be having festival of eclectic stuff here. <laughs> Everything clear as always. You are so kind. <laughs> There's one spot here and I think I'm going to just put a pebble there. Pebbles are always good solutions. Come on, stick, stick, stick. Thank you. Now, this is the moment when you need to look from the distance to see if there's anything missing. If you want to, you can add some loose elements here and there for uh, finishing touches. For example, pebbles are good for that. It may be a pearl or something similar to that. I usually... Um, Add them close to the composition, but not exactly attached. So now I'm looking at these little pebbles. Where is the other pebble container? So, sorry, don't feel seasick. It's just me touching the camera by accident. They usually like to be in groups, so don't forget to give them a friend. So they are not too lonely, just like our balancing composition. Pebbles are usually cheap. Um, you can buy them in various sizes. The small ones are cheap supply. You can get probably in the flower decoration shops. The bigger ones, they are for, from Prima and they are in the nice set I made. This is the various sizes in one place. So uh, if you like this kind of embellishments, if this is something which is for you, pebbles are generally nice 
things to have somewhere on your table. Po co była ta śma maskująca? Po to była, żebym miała y, pierwszą taką strukturę, która będzie sobie gdzieś wyglądała. I zaraz będę o tym mówić, bo przy malowaniu ona się będzie fajnie zachowywać. Będzie w niektórych miejscach ten kolor inaczej się rozprowadzał. Ona tak naprawdę pełni funkcję pomocniczą przy tworzeniu kompozycji, ale jest tek teksturą. Uh, there's a question, why did I use the masking tape and fabric tape? And we're going to see that in the next step. This is going to be um, part that's going to absorb the color in a slightly different way. And it's also helping you to focus on uh, where to put the composition. So my plan to make simple composition failed. This is kind of legit okay good sized mixed media composition. It's not small, but this is what happens with me. And when somebody tells me just make some, something simple, I feel helpless. So now it's important step. We added all of the elements except the middle of the clock, which we can do as last thing. And It's important and it's really, really important to dry everything perfectly. So this is the moment when you can think about the questions you may have. Uh, just to show you the uh, comparison. This is more or less what is going to happen later. Because I'm going to use the heat gun and I will dry everything with the heat gun. Yeah, me and simple, but hopefully you could see that done step by step. And it wasn't too complicated to follow. So now I dry everything. In the meantime, if there's like a huge blob of gel, I can pick it up before it's too late with my wet brush and remember when you glue things press them down so they will have a chance to stick to each other and to the background Trying to go from different directions, different ways. It's good to take like three to five minutes for that. So you're going to go really nicely with the drying. Of course, the best thing is to let it dry naturally if you have time, but Most of the times we want to finish quickly, so that's why you can uh, use the heat gun. But remember, don't blow in one place only because your gel is going to bubble. And this is absolutely natural thing uh, because you're going to fry it. Instead, try to move your heat gun, try to move your composition. I just moved the coke by accident, but it's okay. I'm going to stick it. Okay, a bit of lazy drying. I will clean the table in the meantime. So you can see the gel is holding the elements in place. Do zobaczenia, dziękuję za odwiedzinę.
in the meantime, I can stick the photo under one of my biggest pebbles. So I can create nice focal point for my composition. Oh, that's a question. How do you know when to stop? Ah, it's hard. You could see, I was sure I should stop myself like uh, probably 10 minutes before, but I love adding things. So when you don't really have much space left, that is the moment. But I know it doesn't help too much. Um, it's all about the balance. It's all about the balance. If you see this is balanced, you should stop. Some people are the ones who are naturally clean and simple, so they will stop much quicker. Some people are more like me and they keep adding. Remember, you want to see the background layers, so the lace, the tree board, you want to see the stenciling, uh, you want to still see the focal point, so the clock. This is the balance between what is important and what is not important important things like this have to be clearly visible and all the steps you did they should be still visible that is the best option in the meantime i'm taking clear pebble like the biggest one i have in my jar and i'm going to stick it on the top of these two beautiful people here they look very lovely they look happy together i'm going to use soft gel transparent gel medium one of these that i recommended and um, I will just stick the, um, the pebble on the top and this way we are going to have nice focal point for the composition. Of course, it takes some time to dry. I will put it on something that I can really press nicely. I have a piece of foam. I want to really press so there will be no air bubbles. You know what I mean? That works a little bit like magnifying glass. Perfection is overrated. I start cutting too quickly. I should just let them dry and then cut. Let them be for a moment. sit on the side and you dry. Now it's time to look if this is ready. The best way is to touch and to see. I would say maybe one more moment in here. Everything else seems to be dry enough. For the next step, we're going to use white heavy gesso. Again, one of the products I recommended for the beginners. So far, we only used he um, 3D gel, matte version or gloss version, and a little bit of soft gel, but soft gel will be uh, back in a moment. Okay.
cooling that down and getting the gesso out. If something happens and it's coming off, you will just have to stick it again. That happens in the first uh, project because you don't know how dry is really dry and uh, is it okay to paint or not. Just expect it may happen. So don't be hard on yourself if uh, in your first composition some elements will be coming off. You have to learn by uh, experience uh, how much gel you need to put, how hard you need to press. And the more you use this kind of art mediums, the more uh, you are going to feel it, you're going to have more confidence, so it will be easier for you. So now I take out my white gesso. I'm going to sit for a moment. Uh, this is big jar. Of course, there are other jars, other, other sizes. And you don't really have to paint everything. Um, I'm not going to paint the background. I'm going to paint everything which is metal, plastic, or I don't like the color. So mostly the embellishments. And What is wrong with this brush? No, this is wrong brush. It's making funny noises, so yeah. Uh, sometimes when you take the brush, you feel this is hard because maybe there's glue on it. And that means not so good for painting. In this project, you don't have to repaint the background because it's white. We are going to put one coat of gesso on the top of embellishments, especially the ones which are metal or plastic, resin, and then we are going to add the colors of our choice. So no matter which elements you used, what colors they have, you can paint them to the color of your liking. And it's much easier to put two thin coats of gesso instead of one thick. So this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to touch everything with one coat and to keep it thin, okay? If you're a very heavy-handed person, because there are some heavy-handed painters, try to keep it ultra thin. So you are not going to kill too many details of your project. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to go in kind of thin manner. It's easier to dab inside of the flowers than painting them perfectly. And I honestly recommend bigger brushes for that because we don't need to make it perfect. We just need to touch it with white color. And gesso is going to turn everything matte. So it's going to um, allow us to change the color of it. But also it is going to... Um, <sighs> it will be much easier to color that with any kind of medium of your choice. Just so dries quickly, so you don't have to wait for a long time. So just to remind you, if you like what you are watching today, give me a thumb up and like the video, it means like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to see more classes in your life, you can always join me on Patreon. This is a great subscription option when you have at least two classes per month, every time something new, it may be creating or it may be art theory uh, or other useful tips. And um, that starts on 10 euro per month and by subscribing you are supporting me also as an artist which I appreciate and I have a lot of my patrons here today and I want to send a huge thank you for all the support that I get from you you are the miracle makers look at that it looks very neutral now, it starts to look shabby. But instead of going in painting, I will dry. And you will see Jessa will turn a little bit darker.
And in some parts, if you feel this is too dark, you can put another coat as well. Yeah, Patreon is really great solution for both sides because it keeps me active. I can focus on creating instead of uh, finding some other jobs. And you can get personal contact with me much more often. You can get content which is completely unique. And uh, you can make me do things for you because you have a lot of voting power. I listen to your suggestions and they were really nice projects we did together with my patrons and we have over a year of content already. And now if you join, you can also get the gift because uh, after three months, you are getting a little gift depending on the tier you are on. So the 10 euro tier is getting a special sticker a 25 euro mug, then a 50 um, bag, and then special VIPs, they get a mug and a hoodie. So this is all for you without anything extra on your side. So look here, I would say this one may need a little bit more of the paint. So gesso, second coat, and it's so much easier to cover because it's already matte. Even the gesso sticks better. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even gesso sticks better on gesso. So here's this orange bobbin, uh, orange thread on the bobbin. I'm not sure what color I'm going to do, but maybe not orange. Um, darker parts of the flower. Ah, it's okay. Maybe this one is kind of annoying. So this video is all focused on the products I recommended in the previous uh, live stream class for beginners. So the first um, steps in mixed media, what products to buy. Um, I was trying to give you the idea what will be the most important uh, things on your table when you start this kind of style. And I'm not going to use anything else except the things that I mentioned in that video. <laughs> okay, we dry it. Any questions for this uh, step with Gesso? Do you know uh, Gesso as an art supply already? Because if you're a total beginner, um, I will link the video to um, presentation of the Gesso, so you will know a little bit more about it as well. I was doing that in the previous video. So if you don't know why we use gesso, this video is going to be very helpful. Now, it's pretty cool. However, you may feel you would like to add some special texture as well. Um, I will just show you the texture. You can see, for example, little stones here. You can do that with uh, either things such as mini art stones or micro beads. If you use micro beads, if you don't like the color, do it before gesso. If you like the color, you can do it after gesso. These ones are white anyway, so I usually stick them after gesso if my project is uh, white. Oh, I just got new patron. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just moments ago, somebody subscribed and I think that was somebody from this stream. So thank you, thank you. You are the best. <laughs> Big cheers and welcome to the family. I will let you into Facebook group as well uh, once we finish. So thank you so much. Okay, so let's go to this texture. I told you... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, arms go everywhere. I, uh, I told you it is easier to stick some of the smaller things when you have more liquid uh, products. So for example, soft gel. I have a tube here. It also comes in a jar. Uh, this is easy solution because you can just apply it with the small brush and then sprinkle. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the new patron. <laughs> yeah, that was Carla. Yay! Big, 
big yay for Carla. Thank you so much. I hope you're going to enjoy it. If not, remember, it is not obligation. You can, you can cancel any time as well. Minimum is one month and then you decide what to do later. Um, I'm putting that close to the middle of the composition, but <laughs> also at the same time um, trying to pick the places that maybe not so pretty. For example, maybe you have a big blob of, a blob of gel somewhere, you can use now the texture to cover that, um, or like uh, annoying empty spot, you can use that, you know, this is like uh, extra touch. We were maybe here. So it's quite a generous amount of the gel because we want these little guys to stick. Um, micro beads do exactly the same thing. Oh, thank you. Check it out. We've got five different levels. Pick the one that works for you. A video classes two times per month starts from 10 euro. So I think it's a good price, especially you get the access to all the previous months as well. It's like Netflix, but about art. Okay. I'm sprinkling that. And of course, it's going to be a little bit too much. Uh, where did I put it? Here. And then I top off the excess over the container, like rubbish bin. Tapping off. Okay, look at this texture. Now you have to decide if this is enough or not. If this is enough, leave it. If it's too much, you can brush off a little bit with the brush, but I think it looks lovely. <laughs> um, I didn't kill all the details. It's adding like extra touch. It's better than Netflix so far. Well, that is the best co <laughs> the best recommendation I had so far in my life. <laughs> so, before putting the paint on, of course we need to dry it because the gel is still liquid. So this is the moment when if something was loose, maybe this is going to stick even better. Remember, if these are micro beads and you don't want to paint them because you love the color, you can do it as a last step of your project as well. Micro beads come in different colors, uh, you know, so maybe if you want to have silver, gold, uh, red accents from these, you can do that a little bit later. But myself, I want to have it painted. Now, hard choices, I need to pick the colors. It's going to be a bit vintage, so I can go with brown, and this is always going to be good choice. Looking at the photo of the people here, we can easily go with some warmer colors, something more romantic. Uh, here, for this one, I went with purples and blues, so you've seen that already. Maybe let's go with some uh, purples, browns, and reds. So it's going to be a nice, warm, welcoming color palette. Most of people like these colors uh, and they work nicely with the vintage color palette. And we're going to do the highlights on the top of that anyway. So I think you should be satisfied. Thank you, Kay. I'm happy you enjoy. I really try to make it as easy as possible. Although I, I know this composition is not small or simple anymore, but I tried. I really tried. <laughs> so, in the previous video about shopping for beginners, I mentioned if you would like to have most of the um, use from your product, like best value for money, buy the metallic paints because they give you shimmer and color at the same time. So let's come back to this idea. I think I'm going to take um, 
color which is called flame which is beautifully red uh, copper uh, red wine which is red going into pink and something brown uh, this is uh, rustic brown but nobody can see the name uh, maybe I have paint which is... Oh, okay. Hazelnut. It is a little bit warmer and you can see the name Hazelnut. Okay, so this is going to give us a very vintage palette with a bit of shimmer. On the top of that, I've got a white pearl, which is good shabby uh, highlighting color. It's going to give us a chance to whitewash some of the things which may be too colorful. Uh, instead of metallic paint as a finishing touch, you can also use other products and I will talk about that later. First, initial painting. And I really recommend uh, using paints instead of sprays for the beginners. Um, you can use uh, any kind of acrylic you have with water sprayer and make it flow um, but please remember don't take too much paint because uh, just a little bit of paint is going to uh, go really really far yes michelle uh, let's hope this is just you because so far we were okay are you having problems with connection guys because I, I can see myself. Oh, this is really dry. If you think that your paint is dry, you can put some water in it. Yeah, it's a bit blurry. Okay, so probably this is something for now. Oh, it keeps going blurry. This is so annoying. No problems in Arizona. <laughs> Okay, moment, kocur, kocur, just a moment. Just a moment, możesz przenieść drugi router? In the meantime, we will try to do something. If that is going to help, then perfect. If not, it means there's nothing we can do. So if your paints are going dry, don't forget to add some water or liquid medium and stir before closing. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. I Oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently this color wants to be there. But if it happens, I'm showing you quickly what to do. You can pick up. <laughs> okay, so if you see your paints are going dry, you can add water to them or you can add fluid medium, which is even better. I don't have it on the table now, but this is the one that is dedicated to this uh, kind of problems. So I'm going to add water to this as well. Na razie tylko postaw, ok? Jak będę cię prosiła, to podłączona. Eee... Masz może fluid medium gdzieś w sklepie? Tak na szybko, żeby pokazać? To do liquid acrylicsu, przejrzyste. Hmm? We're going to check if we have the bottle so we can show you. I'm going to apply it with the brush so I can make it a little bit. <laughs> you know, if YouTube, my phone, things happen. This is live stream and we go for over uh, one hour. We don't have it at home. Okay, I will, I will, once I will find it, I will post it. Okay, so the first color I'm going to put is this brown, okay? And I'm going to apply it with the brush in a kind of careless manner. 
in like three points of my project. Let's say one, two, three, around the focal point. And then I spray. So it works like watercolor. This is like the base neutral. If you see your background is getting dirty, give it more water. Take a paper towel. And you can pick up this color from the background. Later you can even clear it with gesso. But this is what we want to get, kind of like watercolor effect. So you get similar things like with spraying, but you are able to control it a little bit more. Don't forget about your balancing composition, of course. I'm adding a little bit more of the brown. And if you like what you can see, dry it. It's going to turn permanent because this acrylic paint is something that is permanent after drying. All the acrylics are like that. So you can take advantage of this and add one color, dry, add second color and dry. So there will be no muddy problem happening. This shade is hazelnut. Hazelnut. Yes, it was just water, water. Uh, I don't really have the fluid medium, which is even better. But if you don't have fluid medium or a liquid gel medium, add water and it's better than doing nothing. Now you can see this beautiful golden shimmer, which is part of this paint showing up. If you have a huge puddle of water, you can pick it up. So it's going to dry quicker. The box cutter. Hmm. Interesting. Well, apparently uh, YouTube goes funny depending on the region you're in. In some countries, they show you blurry um, back, uh, blurry image. In some, not really. So I picked up the extra color. It has turned pretty already, and this is just one color. Now, there's a question usually, how many colors do you use? And for the beginners, I would recommend three colors maximum. And this is what I say in the classroom as well. If you want to get colors done, pick two corresponding colors. So for example, red and orange are corresponding. They are next to each other on the color wheel and make them permanent and then add contrasting color. For example, opposite side of the wheel will be blue or any metallic that is going to be your highlight. And this way you can't go wrong. Um, other option is like I'm using three together. This is red, orange and brown and they're honestly all corresponding colors. So this is not going to be a big problem. And I'm going to add a neutral highlight. Neutral, which is already here, it is white. So uh, the, the best solution, if you are not confident with colors, is to go almost monochromatic. Try your, um, try your projects with only two, three colors maximum, and then most of the dimension is going to be visible. So let's add a bit of red. This red, I know very well, it turns a little bit pink when you dilute it. So it's going to go really nicely with this shade of brown. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do some accents of that color. So groups of color here and there. 
and see what happens. Okay, that was quick. And remember, if it's too much, you can pick it up with your paper towel. Very, very nice effect. If it's too much in some places, pick it up. Remember, we can clean it up as well. So if it goes too far for you, don't worry. However, I really recommend working in small portions of color instead of going all the way. It's more, try to imagine we want to get watercolor effects and a little bit up as well. So now you can see important things happening. All the fabrics that we use, they absorb the color in a different way. Uh, gel is resisting, lace is, res is uh, absorbing differently, little beads, so the art stones are absorbing differently. All that is now contributing to the unique texture we are able to create. So. This is why it is really fun to use different kind of materials in the project. So they are going to get uh, color in different ways. Let's dry. Even blowing with the heat gun, you can direct the colors in selected places. <coughs> Hi, so stuff you. So using metallic paints, you already have shimmer in it. So it's adding extra uh, touches. It's already like two in one. And that is the advantage if you want to create unique effects. Look at the middle of this flower. How beautiful this is by accident. And this is also a very important moment because it's really uh, more important how you finish your project than when you start. The things we did in the background are not so important. They are part of the big composition. But the way we paint it and the way we highlight it, it is really going to make a huge difference. So it's better to spend more time on the finishing touches than the first steps, you know. The first steps are just like a warm up. So now I would like to add just a little bit of this orange and a little bit more of the brown in some parts as well, because I think I lost too much brown. Just not a big problem at all. But it's nice to have some more in some parts. and you can make the colors flow nicely. Mm -hmm. This frame is lost. And now a little bit of orange, this flame color, I'm going to use just a bit as an accent. So 
So one, two, three. And then a little bit here for the balance as well. Remember, I can always whitewash it with the gesso or with my mm, white pearl color. I like it. <laughs> the clue is to really uh, use small amounts of paint and go step by step. Paint and dry, paint and dry. So this way you will be able to control the whole process a bit better. Some people are heavy handed, so if you are one of them, please remember to be very, very careful so you're not having too much. Because um, of course it is possible to reverse, it is not a problem, but uh, it's you know extra steps you have to take. I will explain that in the next moment. Julie, you're more than welcome to watch later as many times as you need. And of course, share with your friends so they can learn a little bit as well. So romantic. I need to change the name of the video from simple composition to not so simple composition, but hopefully people won't get discouraged. I have to try harder to be simple. Okay, I'm checking if something is flowing, but it's not. Now, it may happen that you're going to paint too much, and that happens quite often. And you should know what to do to remove the color, because this is important. And <laughs> honestly, the easiest way is to take the gesso and dry brush gesso on the top, and this is going to give you my matte white finish. I will just show you how you can do it. I quite like what I've got, but I need to whitewash a little bit. Uh, so I'm first of all taking a bit of the uh, clean paper towel and Every time when you dip your brush, you need to remove excess. And then when you are dry brushing, it should be just a little bit on the brush, right? So if you go on the top, you just touch the tops. You're like cleaning it up. A little bit. I don't want to do too much because I like it. But touching only the tops, it's going to keep your metallic color as a background and it's going to help you show some of the details. I don't want to cover too much but I'm trying to show you. You do those delicate touches. You can do it on the lace, on the embellishments, this is to it and so on and so on. The other way is to use metallic paint. So, <laughs> for example, white metallic. It's perfect when you go for this shabby neutral highlight. I'm going to take smaller brush because I want to be more selective. Smaller brush. Again, put your brush in, remove the excess, so it's really almost nothing on the brush. I was showing that in the video about brushes. You can check it out. And then you do the highlight. But this highlight is metallic. So it's going to give you more of the visual impact. And for the, this project, 
white metallic is perfect. Especially on the pebbles, on the light bulb, because it's going to reflect the light. On this one. And of course, the more layers you put, the more shiny it gets. On the edges. This is going to show the lost details. For example, I almost lost this pen nib here. But now, by highlighting, I'm showing that to the people. Look, there's pen nib, right? So if something was lost, you can intentionally highlight that now. You can highlight the texture. Here, I'm highlighting the art stones. You can highlight the lace. Or just the edges of the embellishments. Yeah, it is not as simple as I planned, indeed. I was thinking, oh, I will make something small and sweet, and then I just can't stop myself. So, um, yeah, as a simple composition teacher today, I failed. But I hope this is entertaining enough and encouraging enough. So no beginner is going to run away screaming. And next time I will promise to make it more simple. Okay, this part is done. That means we only have one thing to do, final touch. Um, I was mentioning before that for the highlights, you can use other products. Other product that would be very good for highlights is uh, waxes because you apply them with your fingers and they're, you know, uh, finishing touches. But this is not product for beginners. If you want to save your money, as we were talking in the previous uh, video, I would invest money in the paints first and then um, once you have a good selection of the acrylic paints then I would expand the range going into basic highlighting colors from waxes and that would be first like pearls, um, metallic copper, gold, silver depending what is really the color that you use a lot and then it will be fine. Now let's add our beautiful couple inside. So now it, the gel is dry, so I can easily cut them out. They are so cute. We can glue them in the middle using the same 3D gel we used before with the blob. If you feel you would like to add some color around them, now you can take a small brush and maybe take a bit of this brown hazelnut and paint inside. So this is going to help with the color as well. Yes, all the links will be under the video in the description. So if I say that there's something, uh, I'm leaving you the link, it's going to be there. Another final touch I mentioned that may be some kind of bling, because these kind of products like to go with the bling. You can see here I was, oh sorry, I was using some of the glittery touches or sequins. So now, if you feel there's not enough shine, you could look at your glitters of different kinds. This is glass glitter, you could sprinkle that. Um, your 
micro beads. Instead of art stones, you could now sprinkle the micro beads. If you have seconds of different kinds, you could add some seconds. Not, not this color today, but something from this would work. I have them here. This is from Dress My Craft, I think. That would be nice adding touch. <clears throat> uh, that could be glitter, right? So glitters come in different colors. There's some gold glitter that would fit really nicely. Oh, this color would be really nice. But my advice, if you use the glitter, use more than one color at the same time because it's going to look more elegant and more dimensional instead of cheap. Okay, so for example, if I combine these two, it's going to look really nice. Or if I combine these two, it's going to look nice dimensional brown. If I put just one, it looks a little bit flat. So now it's up to you. Uh, I could add some of these seconds and uh, I would be using the same soft gel um, that I used before. I still have leftovers here and I take another clean brush. Uh, so just in case if somebody's wondering, soft gel. I haven't got white metallic, but you can make it mixing some white acrylic and iridescent medium together. Um, yeah, that would work, but more of the iridescent medium and minimum of the paint. That would be probably the best advice. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to add so much of the sakins. I would probably just add a little bit of glitter here and there for the glitter. I'm just adding a little bit of the soft gel. Big blob. So they can stick to something. Because it's very shiny and very romantic, so glitter is going to work really well. If you feel, feel like you have empty spaces, you can add some seconds in the nice groups. Uh, just to show you again how they look like. If you look at my previous Instagram photos, this is um, the close-up of that project. Um, again, if you're interested in that class, I made it for patrons as a, oh, an, over half an hour sped up video with the voiceover so you can see it as a patron of 10 euro or more if you sign up this project is done uh, as a class and um, just a little bit of the glitter tapping off And now this neutral gold is going to go even better. And now I brush off the excess because it's not going to stay like that. And I'll do it over the rubbish bin. And because of the gel medium, this glitter is going to stay in place. So it is there, but it's not overwhelming. This is extra touch for those people who like to have a lot of bling. And for me personally, very important finishing touch, which are splatters. Uh, splatters, uh, these are something that you can always add if you have a lot of empty space. And this is exactly why we have this project here today. I wanted to show you that you don't need to use the whole space you have. In fact, with the balance, white space in between is equally important. 
if you would just join it together it would be completely different project and it will feel much more rich uh, now today we have nicely balanced composition top corner to the bottom corner we have a little bit of the texture in between and this is providing this white is providing the breathing space so your eyes are focusing in the right place i will talk about that in a moment i just covered the photo and i will do some of the orange splatters it's adding a bit of dynamic look as well this is flame color And as you see, I'm using watered down version of the paint. It's important because it is coming off the brush easier. Drying. And I will do the final speech. Thank you. I'm happy you like it. You, you don't have to do all the things. I'm just here to show you the options and how the final project may look like. You can make it more white. You can make it more colorful, more shiny, more matte. It's really up to you. But the crucial thing is when you make mixed media compositions is the balance if you have a project which is full of elements it's important to leave some breathing space like this one the composition goes here but these corners are here here for adding the negative space the breathing space and it's um, very important that space is present because your eyes need to know what is really the topic to look at what is important and all these things we were doing all these textures strips lace uh, flowers all that is telling your eyes look here look in the middle the same here all that is attracting attention in this place so here look here and because this corner is so heavy, this little one here is able to give you enough of the balance. And it is something that is important. If I didn't have that, you would have the feeling the composition is flipping like this. You will see like uh, uh, something is missing here. But um, with that little one, it is uh, well uh, placed. It has more of the natural balance to it. Also, you can see this a vertical line is kind of grounding that it's hanging from the top and this one is providing like a horizontal it's a horizontal line so it's all um in the nice pleasing to the eye combination of the um, lines and this way um you kind of feel okay everything seems to be fine with this kind of project so next time when you are watching a video, when somebody's creating for you, or you do, you look at somebody else's projects, try to see uh, the composition or the ideas of the composition these people used, because this is the way of learning. I was never really uh, uh, professionally trained as an artist. All, oops, sorry, come on. Oof yeah hello all i learned about composition about all these things going on i learned that from looking at other people's projects and of course some people have natural instinct for placements but the reality is if you are just beginning you like almost everything you would like to try everything and it's good because you will be tempted to try different things but it's bad because you will be tempted to try everything at one project and this is not the good way the projects should be done gradually uh, you should try different combinations 
one after another. Don't put everything on one project because it's not go never going to work. We are starting with the simple composition going from corner to corner. And this is the one that is going to give you the most benefits when it comes to learning because uh, this has many opportunities. You can flip it different ways, right? You can go this way, this way, this way, this way. It's giving you a lot of options, right? You can play many, many times using the same combination. And um, com compositions which are more central or uh, hanging from the top or diagonal in the different way, central but diagonal are more complicated. And I would say this is next step. If you feel confident with the compositions, if you would like to try something else, uh, go for it. But if you are really struggling with composition, try to master corner to corner first. And this is like the one that you never can go wrong. You can't go wrong with that. If you will balance it nicely, if you will leave some of the white space, this is going to be pleasing to the eye. People will like it. Mm, you will be satisfied as well because this is how our brain works. And don't look at my projects um, as an example of the simple compositions because my compositions are not always um, following the rules of art. They are done in a little bit different way. I have my reasons for that. I, I was talking about that into pat in the Patreon class when I, we, we were describing different kinds of composition and giving more information how to work with that. It's more in-depth. But um, for the beginners, try to master <laughs> the balance. Try to focus on doing things in advance. I, I know I put too much in this video um, and I realized that, you know, when doing, but it's hard to really say just one part and stop. So try to watch it many times if you feel that you're losing the confidence. And I promise to do a little bit more on uh, composition in the future. And I will try to give you more ideas about how to balance with the color. But most, the most important thing for you is limit your colors. This is another video on Patreon about that, color versus texture. Again, I recommend. Um, limit your colors. Start with simple composition and then try to focus on what elements are important. And this way it is going to be more successful. Third, leave some of the empty space. Some uh, people are really trying hard to fill the whole project because they believe it is important. But the reality is rarely, <laughs> rarely uh, it is uh, needed to fill the whole project with elements. And if you do so, there is a challenge of showing what is important and what is not important. And that may be a little bit more complicated for the beginner. And um, you need a little bit more feeling of the abstract painting for that. You need a little bit more of the confidence. And um, if you're just starting, I would go this way. This is easier way. This is uh, kind of more a natural way for our brains to think and uh, you can make smaller and less complicated version of that and it's still going to be very successful. Just to remind you what products we used for this, it was white gesso from our minimum list, 3D gel, soft gel, so three art mediums. Uh, we used metallic paint. I used three colors but we could use two and highlighting color one, that was one, and glitter. So it is not a lot. I used one stencil as well for the texture that you maybe see here now. But honestly, for the beginner, if you are able to get some of the nice elements you can put together, this is absolutely uh, achievable with the minimum supplies that I listed 
in the previous video, minimum shopping. And uh, I hope that you can see how you put these products into use. So, mm, you know. <sighs> if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. If you'd like to make my life a little bit better as a creator, subscribe to the channel and like the video. And uh, of course, if you'd like to join me as one of my patrons and take classes from me regularly, you're more than welcome to join. The link is in the video description. So any feedback that you like to leave me, it's now time to comment or to leave the comment in the videos, uh, under the video, uh, if you're watching that later. Um, I promise to come back to this topic, but I can't uh, tell exactly when. I will, of course, I will continue the uh, first steps in mixed media series for everybody. And if you're looking for a little bit more of the in-depth and um, a little bit more crazy ideas and rules of art, Patreon is something for you. Uh, okay, you say it was helpful. You can tell me what was valuable for you in it. I really want to know what was the biggest value because I try to see what kind of uh, content my followers uh, are really looking for. So, I, it's, I, I'm trying to help you um, and this was like taking class in person so you really had the opportunity to look over my shoulder and um, of course it is not the same as doing that together but um, I hope you enjoy oh thank you I got tips as well thank you so much for that um, huge thanks and um, hearts hearts so how do you make hearts hearts Thank you, thank you. You are so, so generous. Thank you for doing that. Um, that is so nice of you. And <laughs> uh, if, um, if you are uh, confused about the products, check the previous video. It's going to help when I was describing which ones are important to buy. Uh, if you feel your product doesn't look like mine, remember I have 10 years of experience and I can do it in the middle of the night. Your cat commented, oh, I appreciate it so much. And uh, the more you do, the more confidence you're going to get. Remember, try to look how I was placing the first elements. Try to see how I was painting. Thank you to Marina. Marina is another patron who just joined. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for doing that. You're more than welcomed into our art tribe. Uh, this is great to have you on board. Um, yes, uh, the flow and direction and leaving the white space. Really, I am a huge, uh, huge fan of the white space, especially for the beginners, uh, because you need to understand what that space makes for you. But when you look at the project, you know exactly where to look. And the ones that have a lot of the elements, they are more tricky. So try to leave them for the next, um, for the next step. Like when, once you feel more confident about gluing, once you feel more confident about building the composition, once you have a little bit different stories to tell. So, if I want, if I would recommend starting composition for somebody, corner to corner, so two corners, it's my uh, first choice for you. <laughs> yes, I really hope to see you in September. So far, so good. Hopefully, everything is going to stay on that path. And if you ever uh, going, are going to join my uh, online classes, this is how they are done. I explain things step by step, remembering there may be some beginners as well. And um, if you go to my live classes, this is how it's all, all done. I make project for you and you follow, uh, you do your own way using my advice, my ways. So um, that is... Um, my usual way of teaching. I'm, oh, I work as a mixed media teacher since 2011. So, oh, it's 10 years this year. My God, it's 10 years of me as mixed media teacher. So that is absolutely wonderful. 
so I am doing that for longer than 10 years now. I'm getting old. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, 10 years of me as a teacher. <laughs> I just realized that, yeah, it's 2010 and I was teaching my first class in 2011. And it was not my full-time job at that time, but mm, I did it. Uh, so, remember, if you have any questions, uh, comments below. <gasps> Thank you to Brenda. Brenda joined us as well. We have patron number three joining today. So, huge congrats to Brenda. Huge hearts. You are in the best possible place to be in the lovely, friendly atmosphere and uh, with a lot of uh, crazy mixed media inspired people. So... Thank you so much for joining. So, if you have any suggestions, uh, what other important topics are bothering you as a beginner, what you would like to see, please leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions about what you saw so far, leave the comment. Yeah, 10 years of me working as a mixed media teacher. Can you imagine 10 years already? Like I should do like with brushes. I didn't realize. <laughs> I just realized that now it is 10 years. It's like anniversary. It's a big anniversary. I should get a cake. <laughs> I think I should get a cake. Um, I will tell my husband. <laughs> so, you know, I'm listening and um, I uh, think in... August, I may be tight with time to make another video for beginners, but I will do my best. Uh, we will see how it all goes. Uh, maybe I will have a chance to do somewhere in the next weeks. And um, in the meantime, I will be posting more. So if you don't know my Instagram account, if you don't know my website, please check. It's in the links below as well. My Instagram is Finovar, which is my private or Finovar Studio for the brand. All the beautiful design team works is there. And you can see tutorials twice a week from my super talented design team. I highly recommend videos and photos, the best team ever. And um, on my Instagram, you can see my projects, my studio, my animals, my life, a little bit of travels, whatever I think it's important. And of course, we are on Facebook, uh, myself as Anna Dabrowska and uh, uh, Finovar as a page. So if you are a new patron, uh, there's a Facebook group for you as well. And if you applied, I will let you in a little bit later. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, did my best. I will try to put uh, the list of the products in the description of the video uh, later today or tomorrow the latest and share that video with your friends if you'd like to uh, get them inspired. Mm, if they don't know me yet, hopefully they will like the content. So thank you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the tips. Guys, that was lovely. Thank you. Thank you for joining as a patron. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Huge thanks to my patrons who are here, even if they are not beginners anymore. And you are all so loved and so welcomed. So, mm, thank you. It was your first video on YouTube we like celebrating seven years ago. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, I love live streams more than videos because I have this personal contact with you guys and it's much easier for me to create this way. So I hope you like that format. I think it's more entertaining for both sides because we can interact and you can ask the questions. Okay. Thank you, Oriana. Thank you, Ilona. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you uh, for being here with me. And uh, you are more than uh, welcome to uh, ask questions and show the project, of course. If you tag me on Instagram, uh, I have to probably make a special tag, like uh, mixed media, first steps in mixed media or something like this, so we can see 
your creations. I will think about the tag and I will put it in the description. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of the day, evening or night or morning. And I wish you wonderful creative time. Yes, and like the video. If you didn't like the video, anyway, give the likes, please. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you soon, guys.